Well, thank you all. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here. And I'm going to go over some, I, some ways to use LinkedIn to drive uh, revenue. And there's going to be seven key ways. And um, I am actually Communications Knowledge Manager at Movero, Inc. Movero provides technology services to help enterprises effectively manage fixed and mobile communication expenses. So I'm going to share with you how we communicate and gain knowledge, both from a perspective of lead gen and then also just for understanding thought leadership out there and how to drive that awareness. I'm also founder of Rare Agent. So if, Kevin, you can go to the next slide. That would be great. Thank you. So we're going to go over seven things. One is how do you create a search optimized uh, engine for your profile? How do you get your message out virtually with the different social media platforms? How do you create and save event searches? How are you going to leverage your connections and the connections of people you know? What groups should you be joining and companies to follow? And how do you message effectively? And then how do you organize your connections? Next slide. OK, so I want everybody to think about their profile as a search engine optimization project. And this is going to become your springboard or your platform uh, into your own individual brand and also your company brand. So there's a few things I want you to think about. There are seven different areas, probably even more than that, to use um, keywords throughout your profile. You can sprinkle those in there. And then this is going to help people find information about you and your organization. If you can get almost everybody within your organization to do a profile similar to how I'm going to show you, you will start showing up in search uh, very quickly and you'll be like the top five. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create a tagline. So you'll see Marge Martin Beeler up there. That's uh, um, my name and then the tagline is underneath. Um, you do not have to put the company name. What you want to do is if somebody was going to search for you or for your product, what would those keywords B, and you want to put that in your tagline. Uh, the next thing is you want to create an update. So underneath there, you'll see that there's an update for the webinar uh, for today. And then uh, from there, you want to make sure you list your education. And then the URL. So if you look at your areas for websites there, there are three. Most people don't realize that you can create, uh, when you edit your profile, you can choose other. You can name that web page or that website, and you can go to a specific page, anything you want, and then you can link to that specific page. So if you are selling uh, telecommunications products or anything, go to that page that really represents what you do well uh, on your website and link to that. The next thing is your Twitter. You always want to um, link your social media accounts and then create a summary that is talks a little bit about who you are, bring a little bit of your personality in, and then link to the application. So for right now, I'm showing an example of Box.net. I typically will link to SlideShare, Box.net, and there's a great new product out there called Beyonce. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it really allows you to add video to your profile. Again, what you're wanting to do is use this as a springboard so that when you start talking and and, and developing thought leadership or conversations with other folks, they're going to go to your website. They're going to go, wow, that's pretty cool, and they're going to start sharing it. The other thing you want to do is you want to get your connections up, up, if you can, past 500. 250 plus is really good. And then you also want to ask for references, and not just for your current job, but for many jobs uh, from the past. Next slide. So there's um, several different ways to get your message out virtually. So the first one is um, you, you can post to Twitter from LinkedIn. You can also use hashtags uh, so that if you don't want certain things to be posted from, let's say if you're linking to Twitter, if you use that um, hashtag, that will help you. Uh, the other thing is there's leverage your news feed. So if you look at, if you go to your home page, there are updates and there's news. Uh, in, in, on your profile or on your home page, you can connect to those and you can search and sort by queue and query. So for example, if you look at my all updates as the example on there, and you go to more, I can just search my connections. Maybe somebody's, uh, I want to see who's connecting with whom. 
So that's one way. The other thing is maybe answers. Uh, for example, I asked a question out on Q&A within LinkedIn, and it really starts giving you ideas out in the market and the different groups. What's top of mind for these executives? Uh, you know, why are they uh, concerned about telecom uh, spend and mobility healthcare spend, as an example? Uh, you know, leverage that so that you can now use that to bring relevance in and connect with this individual. And again, you're going to share in groups, and you're going to share with connecting with others. Uh, next slide, please. One of the things that most people don't realize is when you go into your search queue up in the upper right, you have people, you have groups, you have contacts, you have uh, inbox, um, I even think jobs. You can add some keywords, and you can save those searches. list and find similar individuals in your network or in other people's networks as they join their network that will be sent to you once a week. You can put a um, get a newsletter or, or an update of the saved search and anything new or anybody coming in new that meets that criteria will be emailed to you. Um, this is a very, very great example of if you're, for example, if you're in sales, and let's say um, you're doing marketing programs, like Inside View. This would be a great way for the Inside View team to, to take this search, create a, uh, a queue or a query on VP of marketing or CMOs, and then save that search. And so each sales rep could do it within a 50 or 100 mile radius, save that, and then come back and, and start working those leads. You can also export these connections, which is really cool. Next slide, please. So here's an example. When you do an advanced search and you start doing your save searches, let's say you're doing the people search and you put in someone's name. So maybe for me, uh, I'll give you an example, um, Brian Flynn, B-R-I-A-N-F-L-Y-N-N. -N. And if anybody has their uh, LinkedIn up, they might want to even try this. Um, when I did Brian Flynn and searched on it, I could see second and third level connections. Um, second level means that somebody in my network is connected to that individual. So I'm going to give you an example of how this worked very well for Mavero here. So as I was doing searches, uh, he is the CIO, Brian is, of Crawford & Company, large insurance company here in Atlanta. And as I was doing search, I noticed that um, Ed one of our coworkers here at Mavero was connected to him. So I sent Ed a quick email and said, hey, Ed, how do you know Brian? He said, oh, pretty funny. He's actually my neighbor. <laughs> so I said, hey, can you help me get a, a, a meeting with him for Michael, our CEO? So that's an example of how do you leverage those connections. And again, I use Inside View inside of Salesforce. I click on that, and I find relevant information. And then I use that with LinkedIn to know, you know what's relevant, and then I create my messaging with that relevancy. So for example, uh, maybe if I had seen that Brian was part of a group that I belong to, and uh, I had heard there was something out there that he was trying to address, I would have used that in that messaging. Uh, I would have also used Ed's name in the messaging, because we're leveraged there, and uh, they're going to recognize that. So they'll, they'll take your call or they'll answer your email quicker than if you just do it blind. Again, when you um, share connections, one of the things that you want to do is you want to share other updates. So one of the things that I will do, I link in to a lot of CIOs, Chief Information Officers, a lot of uh, Chief Security Officers, Chief Technology Officers, and Chief Operations Officers. As I connect in and start to learn about them, if they have a peer in the same industry, I will share their LinkedIn profile. And the way that you do that is on your home page, underneath your profile, you'll see where it says share this profile. So I click on share this profile, and then I'll share it with the other uh, executives. So for example, it might be something like this. I might take uh, Brian Flynn's profile, and I might share it with, let's say Carl West is, a, is somebody with um, one of the healthcare companies we focus on. Let's say if I wanted to share that, because maybe I know that they're both trying to address the same need, 
and they're both executives, and they're probably going to want to share peer-to-peer -peer, uh, type of uh, insight and knowledge. I would just do a quick introduction that way. So that's one way to leverage that. Again, you always want to pay it forward. You also want to make recommendations. And you want to share your posts with groups and others. So when you look at those, all those updates or you, you're seeing a post that you like, underneath that you can see if it says share. And you can share it into your groups or just share it onto your profile. Next. So a lot of times I get um, questions on what groups should we join. The first thing I tell people is you don't so much want to join your competitor groups. You want to join where are your clients and your prospects hanging out. So for example, um, IBM is pretty big. And maybe uh, when I was doing stuff for Rare Agent, um, I'm still the founder, but I'm not doing any work there anymore. What we would want to do is, you know, what group should we be joining? So the things that we would want to look at is, who are the individuals joining those groups? And what is the thought leadership and the type of discussions they're having? And then we would want to join that group. We would want to retrieve updates uh, biweekly. So when you set up and join a group, you can ask to get notified of any discussions or any members' updates. And then from there, we would look at those postings and we would answer those discussions. And what happens is you start building your credibility and your brand and your leadership uh, by answering those questions. And you, if you start getting marked as best answer, again, you start coming higher in search results, not just on LinkedIn, but outside of LinkedIn. So we recommend that when you start joining groups, you join that conversation and you post at least two times a week. A lot of times people say, I don't have time. Well, you do. If you have time to go get a cup of coffee, uh, you have time to look at groups and answer a quick question. And the other neat thing about groups is if you look on the right side on that bottom one, similar groups, so you can find a group that you really like. You're going to look for the number of members. That first one shows that it's got about uh, 58,000 members. Again, uh, as you join those groups, you can join very broad or you can narrow the group, the type of group you want to um, join. Next. So here's something that's really neat is as you start following companies, most people don't realize that if you click on employees uh, or tab when you start following companies, if you are a member of somebody in that group or somebody you know is a member of that group, um, your second level connection, now you have a way to get introduced into that company, into that specific individual. So that's uh, one thing that most people don't realize is they can leverage their shared connection. Um, the other thing that's really neat is the view advanced statistics. Excuse me. So an example of that is, I don't know if it was inside view or what organization, but um, one of the organizations had a very high rate of MBA uh, graduates. And I think they might have came from Stanford program. I'm not sure. But as you call in, you might find out that you have an alumni uh, similar or, or that you go to the, you went to the same school. And now you're going to leverage that. And when you call in, um, if you can leverage that last football game uh, versus just calling in blind and trying to talk about your product, you automatically start a connection with that individual. And so Um, the other thing is follow the companies and leverage those advanced filters. Again, you can narrow down your queue and your search. And one of the things that most people don't realize, too, is that when you're doing your search within LinkedIn and you're in the search box, you can use Boolean search. So for example, if I have a first and last name and I have the company name or the title, I will put that in the search when I'm looking for people or even companies' best answers. Uh, or groups. Again, I'm looking to narrow my search and get it very granular. OK, next. If anybody has any questions, please just ask, uh, provide them with um, to Kevin. I don't know what's happening to our graphics <laughs> about messaging effectively people connecting. Uh, something's happened to our graphic. There we go. Oh, well. It's, it's going away, but that's OK. We'll, we'll just talk about how you connect with people. So when you send an invite, an invite could be an email or an invite to connect. 
Um, you want to put a subject line that's very simple. LinkedIn for sales, for example, might be the subject. And then you want to identify who we know that knows who we want to know. And that's a business development university trademark. But what that means is if I send a message out to Brian Flynn, and he's never spoken to me, and he's the CIO, like I mentioned, of um, as long as I mention Ed and a few other items that are important to him, he's probably going to listen. So that's uh, people connecting. Client re relationship connecting would be if I have a Rolodex of clients. So for example, if I mention Ascension Health, if I mention UPMC in my message and they know that client, maybe even do business with them, I might say we both have the same client and then I might put something else in there uh, to draw that spark of interest and to, to connect with that individual. Um, again, when you're group, you can group connect. So you might see somebody that you belong to a group. So for example, um, many of the CIOs will, will actually be part of a HIMSS group or a CIO network. And I belong to a lot of those too. So I can bring that up and say, hey, we're part of this network and I also know we're connected to so-and-so. Um, and, and again, that's going to help open that door to communication. Um, Q&A connecting is really neat. Uh, again, that's answering those questions, asking those questions. It's just a different way to build report. And it's really neat how you can get very granular. I asked a question, got some great answers back, and that actually gave us some ideas for communication, uh, creating a communication for later uh, this, this quarter uh, for some of our campaigns. Next. This is uh, mes messaging effectively to groups. And this is just an example of if you're in a group. And so, for example, if you're in a group of Inside View and you somebody mentioned something about this webinar or podcast, again, uh, this is the way that maybe Inside View wants to leverage LinkedIn to just kind of have another touch uh, to the community base, which would be you guys. So that's just an example of how you might want to uh, create that message and send it out via groups LinkedIn or by Twitter uh, or Hootsuite. Next. So a lot of people don't realize that you know when you're using LinkedIn, you can't always put a .com. Uh, it doesn't always let you link to your URL. So one of the ways to get around that is you can do a Hootsuite or a Bitly, uh, which shrinks the URL. And now if you put that in the body of the email and they actually click on that, now you can start getting some marketing um, analytics or sales analytics or even support analytics. Let's say you're doing a, a SAT survey and you put a link in your SAT survey and you uh, push it out to your LinkedIn group because they're part of your customer support group. That's a great way, again, of how to connect and get that message out, and then also see who's actually reading that message. Next. Here's an example of just a, a question, uh, putting your questions out, and then getting those answers back, or else using uh, advanced search, or polls, or vote on best answer. I recommend that everybody do, do this. Uh, at least answer one question if you can a week, or ask one question a week, or somebody from your organization, and then have people vote on them uh, as best answers. And the other neat thing is use polls. Polls are really cool. You'll find out um, that sometimes you might have a certain preconceived notion about the market, and if you use a poll, you might find out that you've been dead wrong. You might find out you're dead right, right too, but dead on, but you might be wrong. So it's just really a neat way uh, to poll your audience and get some great feedback. Next. Hey, uh, Marge, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Uh-huh. Hey, awesome. Okay, great. Sorry about that, everybody. Hey, um, just a quick question, actually, um, now that you're on the uh, Q&A example. Um, what kind of uh, questions do you think you should be asking in, uh, you know, well, once you... Once you, I mean, you're, I mean, you're talking about questions, uh, question and answer examples. What kind of questions uh, should uh, everyone be asking here? Well, if you're, for example, if you're working with uh, a certain type of title or a person who has a certain role, 
um, ask questions that are very thought provoking. You know, for example, I think it's Gartner that just came out that um, with a with an analyst report, and they said that they believe there's going to be a 44 percent increase in telecom spend for healthcare by 2013. And the reason being that that that's so high and such a high expense jump is because of the proliferation of the smartphones and the tablets. And now you've got smartphones, tablets that you have to worry about, you know, purchasing. But now you have security software and other products that you have to worry about. So I would, you know, ask a question around that, you know. How many are, of you are concerned or how many think that that number is accurate? Um, you know, what's your concern? What's your top three concerns about that telecom spend? How's it going to impact your organization? Um, you'd be amazed at what you get back. Okay, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move on. So a lot of people don't realize there's a profile organizer. If you purchase, there's different levels of LinkedIn you can purchase. You can have your free version, and then you can have an, a, a kind of a, a version that's on steroids. And one of the things that I do is I create folders, and I create notes. So for example, if I speak with a CIO or I have been introduced to a CIO uh, from a third party or second party, I will save their profile in that uh, folder and I'll put a note there. And then what I can do is I can go through my uh, profiles and folders, as you can see on the bottom left there, and I can click on it. And that's just kind of a quick, easy way. Uh, maybe I don't want to get into Salesforce and all this other stuff. I can just go into my LinkedIn and start working my, my um, connection. And again, uh, just sharing that and, and sharing those profiles are very, very uh, helpful and proactive. And, and really, if you can help somebody get business or help them maybe uh, develop a piece of software, maybe they don't have all the pieces and they, they're looking at acquisitions or whatever, if you can share that with another executive and make that introduction, you're paying it forward. Um, they will remember that, and then hopefully they will return the favor down the road. But don't expect something in return. Just do it out of goodwill, and then, you know, if it comes back to you, great. Um, the other thing is if you are a sales force, uh, organiza an organization that has a, a huge field sales force and they have a lot of partners, a lot of people don't realize that you can export your connections from LinkedIn. You can take that printout and you can work with your different partners and say, let's let's sit down and do some networking and let's figure out if we can help each other here. Um, or, you know, maybe you're looking for a thought leader. Uh, maybe you're a large organization, you have an event coming up, uh, look at HIMSS coming up. And if I had been uh, on HIMSS or if I had been a um, individual who was in, who had to maybe get some of the speakers etc. That would be a great way to sit down with some folks, uh, maybe who's on the HIMSS board, and show them, here's my connections, what are your connections, do we know anybody, are we looking for a special band, does anybody have a connection to that band to get them on the agenda uh, to play at one of the events, etc. So that would be an example of how to proactively review your network and then use it in different events, not just sales, but it could be sales support uh, or event support. And that's about it. Um, if you want to learn a little bit about Movero and how we're using LinkedIn and different uh, thought content, uh, you're welcome to visit with us on um, my LinkedIn or LinkedIn Movero Inc. or on Twitter Movero Inc. If anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them if they can type them or Kevin if you can get those uh, to me. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, we do have a couple questions. Um, in the beginning of the uh, of the presentation, we had uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the capabilities that you had about LinkedIn. I'm actually kind of curious about this too. Was your ability to put a video on your LinkedIn profile? And uh, what was the? Uh, I mean, how do you kind of configure that? And um, you know, what what was the uh, the name of the site where you can uh, go ahead and uh, plug that in? Sure. So. When you go into LinkedIn and you go into your, um, under your name, I think it's set up, you can look at applications that you can link to your profile. 
And the best one I found is, is Behance, I think it is B-E-H-A-N-C-E. -E. And what that does, it's really cool, is you can go out, let's say you have YouTube, and you have a YouTube channel, or you found a YouTube that you want to share. You just hit share in the embed, and then you go into your LinkedIn profile to the Behance, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, application, and you just add the video right there, or you upload it. And it's, it's really cool. Excellent. Hey, um, I know um, um, I'm probably wanted, just curious to everybody see. else's. I mean, you obviously had a, um, a, a lot of success uh, with Convero and uh, with Rare Agent. Mm -hmm. Could you um, possibly share maybe one of your most notable success stories that you have and how you use uh, LinkedIn to leverage um, you know, and drive revenue? Sure. So uh, I've got a few, but I think the, the funniest and the best one is um, – well, Milvero has used it, and we've had great success. Now, it's too early in the sales cycle to know where it's going to be, but they've entered into the sales cycle, and that's in less than a month, so I think that's pretty good. Um, so I can't really give any examples just yet from Milvero of actually driving revenue. We're influencing it because it's getting into the um, pipeline, but it's too new to know where that's going to be. But an example of that is... Uh, just using your connections, finding that, you know, the internal employees know people and helping you get your foot in the door, that's number one. But the second one is um, when I was with a rare agent full-time and actually acting as CEO, we were able to, uh, we had a client called Art Within, and they were coming out with, there's a new film coming out uh, called Cracker Jack, and it's by uh, Brian Coley and Jeff Fox, where the co executive produced it. And one of the things they did is they came to Rare Agents and they said, hey, we want to um, get with this big production company that has distribution rights, and we want to see if we can uh, um, get some meetings with our executive staff for them. Can you help us? So what happened is when we did our research, we noticed that Fred Smith, uh, the chairman of FedEx of the board of, you know, of FedEx, actually had invested in this organization. And... Um, knew the executives very well. So instead of going straight to that company that we wanted to influence and, and call and set an appointment with, we first went to Fred Smith's EA, and we then called, and then we faxed, because email is so prevalent these days, you have to get over the radar. And we talked to his EA and said, here's what we're doing. We think there's a similar ROI uh, to what happened with the blind side, and he, they had um, Andrew Kosave and Product Johnson had uh, worked on that, and we believe there's a similar ROI, and that they would maybe want to talk to to this, you know, uh, film production company and to their executive staff. Oh, and by the way, um, Jeff Fox was the executive co-producer. So what we did there is we used Jeff's name as a springboard, but we also used um, that we had done our research, that we realized that there had been some. Uh, investment with the blind side. Blind side had just won all these awards, so it was great timing. And it, was there any chance um, that his EA could put this on Fred's desk? And if he felt it was in, important enough, she would put it there. And if he liked it, could he help us set up a, an appointment um, for Brian Coley's group? And Fred actually answered back via email and said, "Hey, I've already faxed this over to them, and um, they're expecting your call." So that's a very positive way of showing how revenue is influenced and how introductions and meetings are set up very quickly uh, by using a different area. The, the second example, which I think is really uh, fun, is uh, a client that did a lot of IT services and worked with Sony. And um, our agent at the time had used LinkedIn, realized uh, that there was, I think it was a, some bold, something with uh, Microsoft and a founder of Microsoft and uh, um, some drive to give literacy, a literacy project. So she had set up some meetings for this client uh, within Sony, within their executive staff, and their executive staff were very, very impressed that they called back when they had this extra ticket and said, hey, if, if you will come to this literacy project, we're trying to drive um, donations. I will personally make sure you get a meeting and sit down with the uh, CTO here. 
and uh, they got that, and they got a very, very nice opportunity in front of that uh, executive, and they closed a lot of business uh, using that technique. So those are just some ideas of how you use LinkedIn and, and Google News and Inside View um, to really leverage LinkedIn to bring relevance to a conversation. Well, excellent. Thank you so much, Marge. I really appreciate it. Um, I think that probably wraps it up for us right there. Um, again, I just wanted to uh, apologize to everybody for the, uh, the first 15 minutes of uh, technical difficulties. And uh, yeah, Marge, do you have anything to say just to kind of wrap everything up? No, that's it. Um, feel free to play around in LinkedIn and, and Inside View and, and learn how to use the tools because they will help you uh, develop conversations. Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate your attendance and your patience with us. And I uh, just want to let you know um, that, again, we're, uh, our sincerest apologies. But uh, thank you so much for attending the webinar. And Marge, as well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Right. Bye, everybody.